to take a hymnal this morning, let's turn to page number 275. You'll need your hymnal, how firm a foundation. We may do several verses as we stand.
appreciate the song. Great, great hymn. Great hymn of the faith. We're glad you're here. Appreciate everybody being here in the balcony on the lower level. Brother Galloway, if you'll come and ask God to bless the Lord today, today, please, sir. Lord, I bless you that the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Lord, when things around seem shaky, dismal, questionable, God, I'm thankful that I'm fixed. Thank you, God, for the day that you fixed my heart. Lord, my heart is fixed. I praise you and I bless you, Lord, for this. Lord, as we look to you today, we're lifeless and we're limp. And Lord, we have no strength and we have no power within ourselves. Lord, you yourself said, I can of mine own self do nothing. And so, God, we, we really rely on you to, for help. God, you said you'd never leave us and you'd never forsake us. And so, God, we trust you this morning. And we lean heavy upon that verse this morning. Thank you for the breath of God. Thank you for answering prayer. God, you're answering prayer right now, right now, even in this service, about this service, you're answering prayer. God, I bless you for that. Lord, we yield the, the furtherance of this service into your hands. God, I ask you that you would, would guide it where you'd have it go. Lord, we're just like ships. Lord, in, in the bay, Lord, we, we've, got, we've got our sails up. But God, we need wind. Yeah, yeah. God, we know that there'll be no momentum. God, there'll be no advancement. God, there'll be no movement without the wind of the Spirit of God this morning. Yeah. And we know the wind bloweth where it listeth. Yeah. God, we know the wind's sovereign. And so, God, I pray in your sovereignty, God, you'd look upon us this morning with mercy. God, deal not with us according to our sins, but God, I pray that we find mercy. Lord, help us this morning. Lord, you see beyond the mask and the masquerade, you see the need in this congregation. Plug the man of God in this morning. God, give him insight. God, give him clarity of thought. Use him as an instrument of righteousness. Use him, God, as a weapon of war. And I pray that there'd be a great battle won this morning. Lord, here at the house of God, Lord, please have your willing way as we advance further in this service. And we love you for your mercies and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Galloway. You may be seated all over the building. And we want to take this opportunity right now to welcome each and every one of you. I trust the Lord has already welcomed you here on this Sunday morning, all right? Uh, just quickly, a side note, this was found in the parking lot. If you've lost your, uh, your uh, looks like an attachment to, a, to charge some kind of device. So if you lost it, it's here up front, all right? Remember tonight, we'll be back tonight at 6 p.m. Love to have each and every one of you. And then, of course, Wednesday night at 7.30. 7.30 Wednesday night, and of course the meal before the service, keep that in mind. This Saturday, the Lord willing, at 10 a.m., we'll try our very best to get out of here about 10.10, but we're meeting for sowers and reapers, May the 11th, that's this Saturday. Love to have 100% participation from all those that are signed up. You know, we're, we're, we've combined them now. Instead of first and third, we're going the second Saturday of each month, and so we want to encourage all of you that are free and, and uh, uh, men and young men, to come on and visit with us on this Saturday. And if you're graduating from high school or college this year, we would ask you please to let the church secretary know that so we can have all the names and recognize everybody very, very soon. That'll be on the May 19th. And then also May 19th, Brother Kyle, go ahead and say a word if you want to real quick. If you would like to say a word about that. All right, everybody prepare for Sunday evening, May the 19th. We're going to combine our pastor and Miss Lynn's uh, celebrations for their birthdays. Everybody's welcome. It'll be immediately following the service across the road, of course, in the fellowship hall. The theme is going to be guns and glitter. So if you'll bring a lot of guns and a lot of glitter and a bunch of food, we're going to have a big time. Ain't no telling what might happen, but go ahead and plan. That's, uh, that's May the 19th, birthday celebration. We're combining the two because the pastor's birthday in December is usually really hard to get to with a lot going on, of course, in that month. May 19th, two weeks from tonight, across the road. 
All right, thank you. Plenty of glitter, but keep your guns home, all right? We don't want a war, okay? So anyway, appreciate y'all even thinking about doing that. Young people, uh, Memorial Day weekend or those Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I think that's a Saturday. Yes, it is a Saturday, May 25th. The young people, or youth choir has been asked to sing right down here at the Calpin uh, Veterans Memorial uh, Park. And uh, what an honor to represent our church right here locally uh, for, for Calpin. So that's May 25th. Keep that in mind, all right? Let's have the ushers come on in, and we'll get the regular tithe and the regular offering. And then remember the gift uh, basket up front for Ryan and Heather. The basket's right down here up front. If you've got a gift card, you'd like to do a gift card, that'd be great. And then we found out uh, this weekend that uh, my wife and I are going to be grandparents again. So uh, we, we found out one of ours is having another child. And we also found out the gender of that baby. And we're going to leave you in suspense for a minute and reveal it to you in just a moment, all right? God bless you, but don't look at me like that, Brother Trey. Pass the offering plate. Go right ahead. with us if you will. Dedicate the offer and ask God to bless the offering today if you will. And uh, I know you're looking around trying to figure it out. We'll announce that in just a minute, all right? Which one of these is going to have another young one? All right, come on, brother. I'll be praying with you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, today for another time we can come to the house of the Lord. Father, we're glad we're going to have a payday someday. We're glad this world's not our home. We're just passing through. And Father, we're just waiting on you to come pick us up and take us to glory. And Father, I pray, Lord, you to help us while we're here to work and labor for you. We thank you for the offering today, the tithes, and I pray that you bless everyone to give and meet the needs of the church. And I pray, God, that you bless the choirs that sing, the special singing. And I pray for the man of God that come to preach today. You'll anoint him with the power of God. Give the message that I need to hear, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you speak to our heart. Father, may be somebody here today that's not saved, not born again. Father, you'd help them see the need of trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, I pray for a Christian that's cold and indifferent, wandering afar off. I pray, God, you'll draw them close to the fires of revival. Father, I pray, Lord, you give us all a spirit of revival this morning in service. Father, we need a fresh touch from God in our country, in our church. And Father, and I pray, God, you'd help us today. Father, you forgive us of our sins and Help us to worship you today as we wish you had when we stand before you. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Robbie. All right, I got a couple of them behind me. Got one out here in front of me. We already know Savannah's going to have a little young in Savannah and Philip. 
And so that's been known a while. So that leaves these two behind me. I think they're behind me. And so, uh, but there's one more. And her name's Bethany, all right? And so Bethany and Adam are expecting girl number seven. And uh, you know what? Uh, we're taking applications for surrogate mothers, all right? We're, we're, we're thinking about it. We, we, we don't have any boys. Seven girls. Can somebody build me an apartment to move in? Seven little girls. I don't know what's happening. But uh, we're, we will be accepting application for a surrogate mother that can have a boy, all right?
probably don't need to ask, but how many are glad to be in church today? Great thing to be in church. You know, we could be at the hospital, could be at the nursing home, could be in jail, could be in hell. And I'm glad God had mercy on all of us. Gave us grace, allowed us to be in church, all right? All right, y'all getting ready? And while they're getting ready, want to go ahead and uh, uh, recognize uh, Josiah and Leanne, if you'll stand. God bless your heart. Don't take a lot of time, but congratulations on your recent marriage. Let's give them a round of applause, all right? God bless your heart. Thank you very much. Glad you're here, all right? Y'all worship together with these singers. many tears and it seems that peace and rest I cannot find but all this will fade away at the dawning of the day when the pride of Christ will rise and shine I'm gonna rise to my feet will leave the ground I'm gonna shine when I put on my robe and crown leave this world of sin and woe and for see that's made of gold I'm gonna rise I'm gonna rise I'm gonna shine I'm long to see the Holy One, it's by His grace I'll overcome every trial of old Satan I may incline. Guided by the unfading hand, together in glory we will stand as the saints of God all rise and shine. I'm gonna rise to my feet, will leave the ground. I'm gonna shine when I put on my robe and crown. Leaving this world of sin and woe Headed for a sea that's made of gold I'm gonna rise I'm gonna rise I'm gonna shine I'm gonna rise I'm gonna shine So you worship with these singers, all right? Appreciate the talent. Don't you appreciate the talent? And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't play anything, Brother Robbie. I know you can. And some, so many more in the church can play a lot of stuff. But uh, it just, it's just good to know that when God does give people the ability, they're willing to use that ability to glorify the Lord. Amen. All right, y'all ready? Appreciate this family. God bless you. Sing it out. Do a song of the Lord give me just a couple weeks ago and I like what brother Randy said in Sunday school uh, God's not good because he is good he's just good just because he is That's, he, was, he was good long before I ever give him credit for it but uh, this song just says he's been more I'm, I'm thankful to be saved and I didn't know what I was getting getting into I didn't know how good it was going to be I, I'm, I'm loving the, being saved When I got saved, I knew that heaven would be my reward. And when I got saved, I knew you had paid my sin debt I could not afford. But I didn't know about all of those times you blessed me and blessed me. For no reason why And I didn't realize The friend I had made When you forgave all my sins And you washed them away You've given me
given me more than I've ever had before. Above all I could imagine or ever ask for, you've given me tasted your grace, but that was only just the start. Cause I didn't know about all of those times I'd rest in your arms and your grace would be mine. And I didn't realize the friend I had made when you forgave all my sins and you washed them away. You've given me more than I've ever had before. Above all I could imagine or ever ask for. You've given me more. You've given me. I appreciate it, all of you. God bless you. Thank you for singing. Thank you for playing. I want everybody in the building to take your Bibles. Go to Psalm chapter number 51, everybody. Psalm chapter 51, a very familiar psalm of the Old Testament written by David. And it has a great, great message for you and I that are born again, washed in the blood. I need all your help from you guys today as we endeavor to preach. Amen. need all your help. God bless you. Thank you for being here, all of you. Psalm 51, if you'll look at the inscription to the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. So this psalm was written to to present to you and I a repentant heart, a sorrowing heart for the sin that David committed. That's what it was written. I want, I'm going to skip a lot of that. This psalm, listen to this, slowly lays back the great veil of the human temple and permits you and I to enter into the holy of holies of a contrite soul. Psalm 51, if you look at the inscription, is written to the chief musician, which means, Brother Kevin, it was set to music, and it was used in the temple service. And what fitting, what more fitting psalm could there have been for worshipers perhaps by the thousands chanting and singing these very words. You know and I know that this psalm is connected with the terrible sin and the failure of David in the matter of Bathsheba and her husband Uriah. 
We know today, this is an introduction, we know today that David, according to 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 2 Samuel 12, had violated four commandments. Exodus 20, 17, thou shalt not covet. He violated that commandment. Exodus 20, 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. He violated that commandment. Exodus 20, 16, thou shalt not bear false witness. He violated that commandment. Exodus 20, 13, thou shalt not kill. He violated that commandment. Did you know that sin was committed? Sin was covered, but sin was confronted, and sin was confessed. Thank God it was confronted, but thank God it was confessed. Thank God he repented, amen. He was sorry, hey, hey, he was sorry for the wrong that he done. And you and I ought to be sorry for the sin that you and I commit. And our sorrow ought to show repentance, amen. Our sorrow should show godly sorrow that leads to repentance. Everybody listen. This psalm right here, this psalm right here, it's the overflow of a broken heart. Brother Nathan, it is the expression of a contrite spirit, an humble heart because of the wrong that he had committed. I want to stop right here and I want to say as the pastor of the Mountain View Baptist Church, may God be pleased to show us more of the evidences of genuine repentance in all of our lives, in all of our lives. I appreciate what the brother shared with us this morning that none of us are above sin. And if you claim to be above sin, we want to ask you what bar or juke joint are you living over? None of us are above sin, but aren't you glad the Bible said that when we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And if we don't cover our sin, thank God we'll have mercy. I'm glad the child of God, I'm glad the child of God can repent. Amen. So I'm glad the child of God can truly repent. And here's what I want to preach about. If God will help me, because I've got a lot to say. If God will help me, I want to preach on the evidences of genuine repentance. The evidences of genuine repentance. Now, we're not God, so don't claim to be God. But how are we to know, and how are you to know, and most importantly, how is the Lord to know if somebody's repentance is real, if somebody's repentance is genuine? Uh, you know what Brother Billy Mitchell said? Brother Billy Mitchell said that uh, some people are never going to be in a right relationship with God until they repent of their repentance. I heard him say it with my own ears. At first I said, whoa, that's big. What in the world is he talking about? I'll tell you what he's talking about, Brother Bride. Uh, because some people, all they have is regret. And some people, all they have is remorse. But thank God there's such a thing that goes beyond remorse and beyond regret. Now thank God it goes to repentance. Amen. Repentance is a change of mind that issues in a change of heart and a change of life. And I want to preach today with God's help. How are, what, what are the evidences? What are the marks or the traits of genuine repentance? I want to start with verse one. By the way, turn the page. There's 19 verses here. And did you know that there is a message, a sermon, a Bible lesson, Brother Ben Atkins, in every verse of this psalm? So we don't have time to do all that today. We'll get as far as we feel like the Lord wants us to go. Look in verse number one. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and, 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 and be clear when thou judgest. Verse five, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Verse six, behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Look at verse seven, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness at the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Verse 9, hide thy face from my sin and blot out all mine iniquities. Look at verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God. And by the way, by the way, I may, I may not get back to it, but true genuine repentance is more concerned about the root rather than the fruit. I said it's more concerned about the root rather than the fruit. A lot of people, folks, that have never got to the place where they realize that the matter is the heart. It's the heart. Look at verse number 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Un unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness. That's the death of Uriah. O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Here it is, the last verse I'm going to read. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. And I wish I had an amen right there. Thank God for repentance. Thank God people can get right. I said, thank God people can get right. Uh, we may fail, and we do fail, and we may fall short, and we do fall short, but the good news of the word of God is uh, you don't have to stay in that condition. Thank God you can repent. Thank God you can turn. Thank God you can allow the sweet Holy Ghost of God to work on the inner man. And when the sweet Holy Ghost of God works on the inner man, and thank God he will work repentance. Amen. He'll work repentance. Oh, my. Now, did you know that after this psalm, listen close now, after this psalm, Brother Randy, David was ever after known. Now, this is going to hang some folks. I don't want it to, but he was known as a man after God's own heart. I wish I had a Bible reader. You say, but what about, what about the adultery? What about the murder of Uriah? What about violating four? of the Ten Commandments that were given on Mount Sinai. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. He violated and broke every one of them. Oh, but thank God, according to this chapter right here, he turned to God in genuine, sincere, I mean heartfelt, heartfelt repentance, and I believe God forgave him. I said God forgave him, and God allowed him to continue on in writing songs, and he was known as the man after God's own heart. I've said it 1,000 times. I want to say it again, that failure is not final. Amen, failure is not final. I will hurry to say that the sword never left his house. He reaped the consequences of his sin. 
He reaped, he reaped the, he reaped the result of the sin. But ladies and gentlemen, although the consequences were there, I want to tell you what else was there. Forgiveness and remission. Forgiveness and remission. And I want to say to you today, if you'll repent, if I will repent, if the children of God that we know of, if they will repent, I want you to know, I thank God you've got a heavenly Father that cares about you, a heavenly Father that loves you, a heavenly Father that'll blot out your sin, that'll purge your sin, that'll cleanse you of sin, that'll wipe away the defilement, and thank God you can get back on the right track of doing righteousness, amen. There's no need in anybody falling short and completely giving up on God and getting out of church. Somebody help me. And giving up on the things of the Lord. I'm telling you, Brother Kyle, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Now, I want to show you something that the Holy Spirit, I didn't read these stuff out of a book, okay? I've just... I've just, Brother David, I've just laid the psalm open before me and I've read it over and over and over again. Brother Galloway, and I've let the Holy Spirit minister to my inner man and show me what I need to say today. I want to show you something that is remarkable. It's remarkable, Brother Riley. Look at Psalm 51, verse 1. Now, I want you to take a pen and, and it's not going to hurt you to do this. I want you to take a pen. I want to show you something. Have mercy upon me. Yeah. Underline the word me or circle it. Oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Yeah. Look at verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Underline the word me and mine and cleanse me. Me, me from my sin. Look at verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgression. Look at verse 3. And my sin is ever before me. My sin is ever before me. Drop down to verse 5. Behold, I was shapen. That word means to bring forth in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Drop down to verse 7, everybody. Verse 7. Purge me. Me with his son, and I shall be clean. Look at verse 7, Brother Derry. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Look at verse 8, church. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Look at verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Turn the page, everybody. Look at verse number 14. Deliver me, deliver me from blood guiltiness. And that word blood guiltiness means blood that is shed, that causes death where the person ceases to be or is put in a pot silence. And that was Uriah. You know he sent Uriah home. Y'all gonna help me, aren't you? Y'all gonna walk around the text with me, aren't you? Y'all, everybody's on the same wavelength, right? You know, Miss Michelle sent Uriah home for a night from the battle so that therefore him and his wife could be together. But Uriah said, no, I'm not going to leave my men without me. I'm going to stay there and I'm not going to go home. He was trying to cover the sin. Are you listening? And so ultimately he had to write a letter, Brother Randy, and send Uriah to the front line, Joab, I believe. And he had Uriah, Uriah right to the battle and he caused him to die and to get killed. And that's the word blood guilt right there. But if you'll look at a little little English lesson here, little, little and I'm not much on it. I'm, I'm not very good at it at all. I'm really not. But Miss Stoltz, I believe that with the first three or four verses, I believe those are personal pronouns. Is that right? The word me, the word mine, the word my sin, uh, uh, me again, my iniquity, on and on and on. Now, you know, when I read that, Brother David, it just kind of, it just kind of jumped out on the page on me, at me. And you know what the Holy Spirit said, Brother Love? He said that if somebody's truly repented, like David is, they will assume responsibility, they will assume, they will assume personal responsibility for their own sin. He said, I, I don't get it, church. I don't get it, preacher. I don't get it. Notice, he said, 
have mercy upon me, not Bathsheba. Have mercy, blot out my transgressions, not Bathsheba's. Wash me, not Bathsheba. Wash, cleanse me, not Bathsheba. Acknowledge my transgression. I'm not acknowledging Bathsheba's transgression. Are y'all getting this? My sin, not Bathsheba's sin. Not even our sin. Not even our sin. I wish I had somebody. Not even our sin. Over and over and over again, he uses, and I correct me later, and I probably might be wrong, he, he uses these personal pronouns in the first person singular in referring to himself. You know what that shows me, Brother Johnny? That he has assumed personal responsibility for his own sin. Now, you say, well, what does that mean to us? That means to us, and I'm telling you, it don't matter if it's on the pulpit or in the balcony or in the pew. It don't matter if it's on the sound booth. It don't matter if it's on the front row. When you and I are all concerned about everybody else's sin instead of our own, then you can realize and you'll know that that repentance is not genuine. That repentance is not real. You know what people do? People say, don't don't get mad, don't get mad, but just, 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 let's just put put our big boy clothes on and take the truth, all right? Take, put our big boy clothes on and take the truth. You know what most people do? What, what about them? What about him? What about her? What about their part? What about their involvement? What's going to happen to him? What's going to happen to her? What about my husband calls this? My wife calls this? That church calls this. That school calls this. What about, what about, what about the blame game? You don't find that. Don't get mad. You don't find that in David's life. He said, well, have mercy upon me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Uh, Acknowledge my transgression, my sin. My sin is ever before me. You know the repentance is genuine when you and I are willing to assume personal responsibility. We are willing to assume personal responsibility. God help us. God help God's people. God help his church. I've seen this over and over and over and over again. I've seen it so many times that Mike near wants to make near want to make you jump in the truck and drive about 500 miles and just get your mind off everything. Because every time I ever get involved in trying to help anybody, anybody, most of the time, most of the time, you know what I get? Her. Him. You. Them. Them. That church, my family, my job, my boss, my grandmother, my aunt and uncle, my children, my, my husband, my wife. Please believe me when I tell you, please, that I very rarely, very rarely meet with anybody and they say, myself is the problem. Let's talk about my sin. Let's deal with my iniquity. Let's, let's, let's ask God to help me with my evil way. Have you assumed personal responsibility for your own sin? Are you willing to let the Holy Ghost, are you willing to let the Spirit of God indict you rather than you indict everybody else? Why is it so quiet? Am I not preaching the scripture? Brother Brian, am I not developing the text? Can you believe, and did did we even turn the page? Yeah, we did. Can you believe over and over and over and over he's got the spotlight on himself? He's confessing his sins. He wants cleansed from his iniquity. 
He wants washed, Brother Randy, from his wicked way. He wants, come on, help me, church. He wants purged from that which he has done. He wants the hyssop. And you know, that was a little, a little shrub. That was a little shrub that they dip in the blood and sprinkle the blood, even on the cleansed leper or the tabernacle furnishing. And so there's blood cleansing right there. That's 1 John 1, 7 right there. And I'm glad, thank God, if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, hey, hey, cleanses us from how much? All sin. All sin. You may be here and in sin this morning. You might really be here. You may be here. And don't nobody look around. And don't, 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 and don't get your shovel out. And don't say, I know that who that's for. And that's for them. And that's for her. And I'm glad he's busting their heart. And I'm glad he's letting them have it. Has it ever dawned on you I might be letting you have it? What's wrong with us? What is wrong with us? I'm preaching and people still not listening. I'm talking about spiritually listening. Spiritually. We say, I know who that's for. I'm glad he finally got that. I know who that's for. Oh, he's burning them up. He's burning, he's loading their wagon. He's loading their wagon. See, you come to church all the time and your wagon's never empty to begin with. So we can't load yours up because you don't think you've got me wrong. You don't have any sin. He assumed personal responsibility for the sin that he committed. Now listen to me. Adultery takes two people. Somebody help me. Adultery takes two. But in this chapter, in this chapter, you cannot find Bathsheba's name. Am I, am I preaching the scripture? You cannot find Bathsheba's name. So well, he, she, she was pulled in. Yes, she was. She sure was. Well, he, he sent for her. Yes, he did. He committed sin. Yes, he did. He sent Uriah to the battlefront to be killed. David was all wrong. That's why we have this psalm. Because he's not concerned about Bathsheba's part. He said, you know what? I need mercy, but I need mercy upon me. I need wash, but it's me that needs the washing. I need cleansing, Brother Josiah, but it's me that needs the cleansing. I acknowledge, I love verse 3. I love verse 3. I acknowledge my, not her, my, my transgression. And, and verse 3, my sin, boy, I love it. My sin is ever before me. You know, you know and God knows that repentance is genuine when people start talking this kind of language. I'm not throwing rocks, so don't think I am because I don't have any rocks in my pocket. I'm not that kind of a preacher. I suppose I could be, but by the help of God, I'm not up here throwing rocks. But I will preach the truth, amen, amen. without compromise. As long as anybody in this building or out of this building once I pass the buck, and get all caught up in the other party or the other person and their wrong and their guilt and their sin, then you mark her down, friend. They've not found themselves in the first three verses of Psalms 51. Could I show you one more? Say, how many do you have? Oh, I have enough to preach again. To, to the Jubilee. And by the way, by the way, I wish I had somebody about happy over the Jubilee. I said, I wish I had somebody that's going to get happy about Jubilee. You are taking off, right? You are working your schedule, right? You are not going to miss some glorious services and them extra scrump delicious meals. Somebody help me. And that great, 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 great preaching that's going to be happening. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited about Jubilee. And I want you to be excited. Don't miss any of it if you can help it. But I want to show you one more. Not only, Brother David, is repentance genuine when people assume personal responsibility for their own sin, but number two, I want you to look at verse three again. Look at verse three. 
For I acknowledge my transgressions, plural, and my sin is ever before me. But watch verse 4. Nobody preaches verse 4. Nobody preaches verse 4. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Brother, I want to tell you something. What an, evalu- what an evaluation of sin. You know how you know that repentance is genuine? It's genuine, Miss Rhonda, first of all, when it assumes personal responsibility for their sin, but number two, when it acknowledges the direction of their sin. I'm going to explain this and I'll be finished. And I'm not, it's only, it's only 12. So man, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing exceptionally well. You know that's right. Brother Love's smiling. Brother Love, he's got a long drive. The roast is in the oven. We don't want the roast to burn. Amen. Your sin and my sin, wherein it may violate somebody else, wherein it may hurt somebody else, wherein, Brother Spencer, it may affect somebody else, wherein it may have a domino effect in hurting or causing mayhem to those around us. But you know, ultimately, ultimately, you know the direction of our sin? It's against God. It's against God. Now, you know what? Let me tell you what the Lord showed me. David, I hate to keep bringing the same words up, but I don't know what else to do. David knew, David knew he did wrong with Bathsheba. David knew he did wrong with Uriah. David knew he did wrong with Ahithophel, his counselor. David knew he violated four commandments. Watch it. David knew he was the king of Israel. And so he, he basically, Brother Bill, he hindered his own monarchy, his own leadership. So he knew, Brother Mayo, he affected a lot of stuff. But you know what, David, when David starts confessing and David's showing the evidence of repentance and David's brokenhearted and David has a crushed spirit over it, you know what he says, Brother Love? He said, Lord, my sin, my sin that I've committed, it's against you. I've grieved God. Something help me. I've offended God. I've hurt God. I've offended the Almighty. And you know, and listen, I want to help you. I want to help you. You know that repentance is genuine when you acknowledge the direction of your sin. When you acknowledge the direction. And the direction may be, it may be horizontal. But I'm telling you more than more than horizontal, it's vertical. Can I give you two verses and let you go? Can I give you two verses? How many of you believe, how many remember, how many remember when the prodigal son, well, I was going to use it, but that ain't, that ain't filthy rag. How many remember when the prodigal son was on his way back? You remember what he said he'd say? He was rehearsing his repentance. Brother Joe, he was rehearsing his repentance. You know what he was said he's going to say when he gets there? Father, I have sinned against heaven and, help me, before thee. I've offended you, Father. I've messed up with the harlots. I've messed up with the riotous living. I've messed up with squandering my wealth, the wealth you gave me. But Father, ultimately, I've offended you. That was the prodigal son. Can I give you one more verse? Can I give you one more verse? What about Joseph in Genesis 39 when the master's wife cast his eye on Joseph? You know what Joseph said in Genesis 39, 9? How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Against God. Your sin and my sin many times involves someone else. Your sin and my sin many times offends other people. Right or wrong, it offends other people. But I want you to understand something. Your sin and my sin ultimately offends God. It's an affront to God. It's a violation to God. And you know what? Here's what I want to finish with. This I want to finish with. You know and I know and God knows that people are on the road to genuine repentance and they're more concerned 
with how they've hurt God than they are being concerned about being hurt themselves. In other words, in other words, listen to this, listen to this. You know and I know and God knows that there's genuine repentance in a person's life. Genuine repentance. They're more worried about the cause of their sin rather than the consequences. That's the heart. That they've offended God. I didn't take time, but could I tell you that in this chapter, you find the word transgressions, iniquity, sin, transgressions, sin, sin, evil, sins, iniquities, and blood guiltness. That's about nine or ten designations for sin. Paul, uh, David was serious. David was serious, and he was sincere, and he was transparent, and he said, you know what? All that I've done, it falls under all nine or ten of those headings, and I'm willing to acknowledge it. I love you, but I want to tell you something. As long as you're blaming everybody else, right. as long as you're more worried about the consequences than the, than the cause, then it's probably not genuine repentance. Genuine repentance. Genuine repentance turns the spotlight of God's word on themselves. Group of kids get in trouble. That's what I said. Group of kids get in trouble. Ninety-nine percent of the time, every youngin in the midst of it, you know what they say? What about them? What about him? What about her? I'm not throwing rocks. I'm preaching. What about that family? What about that family? No, no. What about what you did? That's what you need to focus on. What you need to focus on. And, 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 and since the chapter, since the chapter is right in front of us and I can't dodge it, I can't dodge it and I'm not going to dodge it. I'd be a compromiser if I dodged it. Adultery was wrong in David's life, and adultery is wrong in everybody else's life. It's wrong. And here it is. It needs to be repented of. Repented of. There's so much more in this chapter. You know what genuine repentance else it does, Brother Cam? It's amazed at how willing God is to forgive. Look at all them, I don't want to whet your appetite. Look at all them words he used. Cleanse me, wash me, purge me, use hiss upon me. Over and over, look at the terminology. It's just amazed at how God can thoroughly clean somebody up. And I believe God can clean people up. And I believe he's willing to clean people up. Hey, I believe he's willing to put the sin behind us. I said, I believe, Brother Rear, he's willing to put the sin behind us. He's willing. He's willing. But you're going to have to get to the place where you say, wash me, cleanse me, forgive me, have mercy on me. Get it right. Get it right. And go forward. Go forward. Let's bow our head. Let's close our eyes. Brother Landon, step up there and pray with us, please, sir. Our musicians are coming. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Brother Landon's going to pray. Let's go ahead and stand all over the building. Landon, you pray for us, please. Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we thank you for our preacher. We thank you for the way he preached this morning, God. Thank you for his stand and his uncompromising way he preaches, Lord. We ask you this morning, God, if there's one in here, Lord, and I'm sure there's many, God, that, Lord, have something in their life, God, that is hindering their walk with you, hindering their That's relationship, it. God. That's it. Lord, will they fall on this altar, Lord, and get around hindering with you, their God, walk. They hindering their walk. Lord. God, I pray for the ones, Lord, who are just wallowing around in sorrow, God, for the ones that, Lord, are just sorry about it, Lord, they aren't actually in the, they aren't in the stage, Lord, they need to be in in repentance, God, they're just sorry about getting caught, Lord, I pray you'll help them. God, I pray, Lord, if there's some in here, Lord, God, who are covering up something, God, they're trying to hide from you, God, Lord, let them be known today, God, that there's nothing they can hide from you, God, Lord, that they may hide it yeah. from the church, they may hide it from the pastor, Lord, but you know it all, God, God, I pray, Lord, if 
that you'll help our church, Lord. God, to have a spirit of repentance about us, God. I pray for the ones that are have never repented, God. The ones that have never been God, saved, help us God. all, Lord. Lord, God, I God, fear, help us all. Lord, there's so many in here, Lord. God, that may just have a profession and not a possession, God. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Ghost will work on their hearts. God, we convict them, Lord, and let them repent, Lord. God, and I thank you for the day you saved me, God. And I thank you that I've been repenting ever since, God. God, I thank you for all that you've done. Give us a good day. Give our pastor rest this afternoon. Lord, bring us all back safe tonight. I pray you'll go home with us, God. God, and there's ones, Lord, who won't come to this altar. God, they won't get right with you, God. I pray you'll go with them, Lord. I pray you'll convict their hearts throughout the evening, God. And Lord, let them come back tonight, God, and get things right with you before they go home. God, I pray for the Jubilee upcoming, God. I pray you'll get our hearts ready for that, Lord. Lord, get excitement, Lord. Put it down in our hearts, Lord, that we're going to make up our minds to be God here, God. God. Lord, to be a part of it, Lord, and do everything we can, Lord. God, to have a great Jubilee, and we'll thank you for all that you do, and we ask it all in the precious blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. Let's sing it.